good day guys and welcome to my chalk talk on differential versus density gradient centrifugation um, take 130 I think keep mispronouncing my starting title maybe 131 um, we'll take a quick look at the differences at what each of these types of centrifugation are the differences and a brief history um, brief history wise we have a gentleman here called Christian Hagens in 1659 who noticed that the planet Saturn seem to impact the orbit of moons around it and he had a work called D by Centrifuga which is the first mention of centrifugal force that um, history can relate to us. Um, 200 years later a German brewer had the idea of spinning his milk faster which managed to make sort of the milk in the bottle or the bucket separate so that the cream is at the top and then the milk will go to the bottom and shortly after that and immediately after that pretty much scientists got involved and realized that there was something interesting going on here um, the first real mention of it in the scientific community was in the 1930s um, Manuel Albert Claude, we'll just write his initials in here, he pioneered techniques of cell fractionation using differential centrifugation. So this came first. Density gradient centrifugation came much later in 1950s. And he realized you could separate a guy called Myron, realized you could start separating particles not just based on their size but also their density. And we'll go into what all that means right here. So, um, centrifugal force first. What is it? It's a separation method in which the rotation of a sample around a fixed axis produces a force. So, I'm sure most of you here have seen these in the lab. Lots of samples are placed inside a large, in this case a small container, and it's spun around the axis here, and the force sends the contents spinning to the side. Centrifugal force is exerted along the axis, I mean to the outside, so if you had a bucket of water and you spin it around in a rope, you know the water would all go as far away as it from the spinning human. There's me, and I'm spinning this my hand here, and I've got a, a bucket holding on to and spinning around. I don't know if anyone else did this as a kid, but it's fun. The water in the bucket, instead of coming down and coming outside the bucket, it doesn't do that. In fact, it stays, if you're going fast enough that is, it stays on the outside and you can do that as it keeps you keep going around. So, the two types, real simply. Differential fractionation, differential centrifugation rather, is based upon, it splits things up based on size. And I think I chose the orange, based on density. And there is a relation between these two. Density is the unit volume of a substance, whereas size is the volume, so this is volume, whereas density equals mass divided by volume. So there is a similar relationship between these two. Um, it's not important, but it's just useful to know what's actually going on. So what is differential centrifugation? Well, it separates out um, cells and organelles from larger um, from a larger solution, or a larger sort of area. And the way it does this is by using increasing amounts of speed to separate things out by their size. So we'll look at a solution here which contains some larger red squares, some smaller blue stars. Oops, that last one.
and then we'll look at, say, some green circles. And I know the sizes aren't all perfect, but the idea here will become very apparent soon. So after the first spin, let us see a oops, back to a brush, and say a slow speed. The red squares, the largest sized particles, will all collect, or rather sediment out at the bottom. And the other two shapes and solution will still be the mixture will still be around Oops, put it on there it's going to be smaller than the blue ones and then after repeated speed repeated spin again this time the blue the red square is being removed from the bottom pelleting out you then have the stars go to the bottom here. That's another large one. And then you have the green circles. And in fact it doesn't really matter how many different things you have in your solution. As long as you have oops as long as you can keep spinning, you can keep separating out smaller and smaller particles will disappear out. So in fact I can make this apparent by, that's enough, if I just added for instance some black dots in here in the initial solution, and they'd still be here in this solution, and they'd still be in here as well. So if we wanted to spin this again at an even higher speed, say medium, we could spin this at a higher speed and it would, the green circles would go to the bottom, the larger size particles go to the bottom and everything else gets left behind. The larger particles sediment faster than the smaller particles and the sedimentation rate, I'll write this down here, Sedimation rate can be increased by increasing centrifugal force. So the smaller the particles are, the harder, the faster you have to spin, the increased centrifugal force needed to get them to pellet out to the bottom, but it will happen. Finally, we'll take a look at density gradient. Um, a density gradient separates molecules or particles, usually much smaller, and to do this it uses a solution compared to differential centrifugation, which you just spin down the whole thing. Usually, um, these density gradient centrifugation requires the use of a solution to suspend your sample in. So in this case, let's just say we have a little sample right here. And um, there are two types of um, two types of solutions that I found in researching this. There's a sucrose and also a casein salts. Sucrose appears to be the one used most often, and but there are other solutions you can suspend your sample in. As opposed to differential centrifugation, you only have to spin, you usually only have to centrifugal force this sample one time, um, and you'll get a separation of everything you need to see. So one spin, well, it's many spins, but one, um, let's just say one speed, as opposed to many different speeds previously. You'll have your your thing full of your solution. Then you'll have different layers. As this sample has come apart and is split up by its different densities, and in fact, as the densities of these particles is higher than the density gradient, there should be pellets in each of these layers that you can collect if you need to. 
This is rate zonal density gradient simplification. Um, one speed is normally fine. And this density gradient simplification is, is involved in the fractionation of particles on the basis of their buoyancy. So how they sort of stand out in the solution based upon the centrifugal force, different densities are in different areas based on their buoyancy within the solution. To sum up a brief overview, just on some of the differences we covered in this small chalk talk, differential centrifugation separates based on size, density gradient separates things based on density. Differential centrifugation separates cells, larger molecules. Density gradient looks at sort of um, very small molecules, particles. No solution needed. Sucrose slash salts needed for density. Um, rarely, I'll even say no contamination. This is a much easier, much easier, much older technique, much easier to use. Um, some contamination is always possible here due to everything being in the same sample. Uh, in conclusion, differential and density gradient centrifugation are two different methods used to separate different particles, usually larger versus smaller, and differential uses size versus density uses the actual density to separate them. The main difference between the two is the type of physical property on which each type of centrifugation method is based on. Um, thanks for listening. Sorry for the terrible handwriting and have a good day.